Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com. DwyerVIP.com for free, premium sports picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let's talk just a little life philosophy here for a second so you know where I'm coming from. You know, if you walk into a casino in Las Vegas, let's say, the casino is going to look grand, right? Especially these higher-end casinos. They're going to be pumping in perfumed air, right? You're going to look around. They're going to pump in oxygen so you feel giddy. You're going to see a lot of brass. You're going to see a lot of gold. You're going to see a lot of expensive things. Understand the casino is in the business of making money. If you follow the crowd, then you're going to lose in the long run. The structural bias is for the casino to make money. As you look around at all the beautiful things around you, just understand that they're collectively being paid for by gamblers. So to get an edge on the casino, to get an edge in life, you're going to have to break from the crowd. Years ago, I showed up to a fantasy football draft. And I had the leading fantasy football magazine. And as I showed up, I looked around the room and I noticed that most of the guys in that fantasy football pool had the same magazine. I was going about things the wrong way. It would be like being a head coach and having the same playbook that everyone else has. You need a different playbook. You need to analyze things and look for things that other people are missing. Sometimes you're going to look like a jackass because your views are going to be outside of the mainstream. Consider yourself lucky. Let's talk about Tyson Fury versus Derek Chisora. Right now, Derek Chisora, to me, is a fighter with a low ceiling. I understand he's been on quite a run. I understand he's beaten people like Gerber, Kevin Johnson recently, Malik Scott, right? Robert Hellenius. I know the official decision was in Hellenius's favor, but even Vitaly Klitschko, the reigning heavyweight champion, thought that Derek Chisora clearly won the fight. So much so that Vitaly Klitschko gave Derek Chisora a match, and Derek Chisora went 12 rounds. I know Chisora lost probably all of the rounds against David Hay before getting knocked out, but I hadn't seen Hay that tired in the ring for several years. Right? Hay wasn't that tired in the ring when he faced Vladimir Klitschko. So I know many of you have sent me emails, have written comments, that this Derek Chisora is better than the one that faced Tyson Fury the first time. That this Derek Chisora is going to come in more committed, in better shape. That he wasn't in shape the last time. And that this Derek Chisora is going to beat Tyson Fury. The problem is, we know exactly what to expect from Derek Chisora. It's the same playbook every fight. He's going to be on his front foot. He's going to try to cut off the ring. He's going to try to wear you down. He's going to be throwing looping punches. Right? Eventually... Even better boxers, technically, people like Malik Scott, are going to get caught with one of the bombs. They're going to be tired of being forced on their back foot, right? Are going to 
hit the wall and then hit the deck or just be overwhelmed in the later rounds. Right, Derek Chisora, after all, did walk down effectively Kevin Johnson. And he won that fight on the scorecards by a wide margin. If you look deeper in the Derek Chisora's background, you'll notice that in several fights before the Kevin Johnson fight, Chisora was on a KO streak. He was knocking guys out. Now, all of that said, I'm going to break with the crowd on Tyson Fury. Okay, now let me define the crowd. Nassim Richardson, esteemed trainer of Bernard Hopkins. Steve Cunningham. He's unimpressed with Tyson Fury. Steve Cunningham, even after losing to Tyson Fury, was unimpressed with Tyson Fury. I know David Hay went through a period of time where he wanted to fight Tyson Fury. Made some negative remarks about Tyson Fury. He's unimpressed with Tyson Fury. Adam Booth, in David Hay's corner. Booth is a straight shooter. Booth is a guy who, when I'm looking for opinions on fighters, I try to track down his interviews. I know he's unimpressed with Tyson Fury. When I hear from people here online, several of you, said, hey, Dwyer, you look foolish supporting Tyson Fury. That's okay. I'm not afraid to look foolish. Let me be clear on who I think Tyson Fury is. <clears throat> if Tyson Fury were to sign to fight Vladimir Klitschko, after, in my opinion, he dismantles Derek Chisora in this rematch. I like Tyson Fury in this rematch. Right? If he were to then sign a fight, Vladimir Klitschko, and if he had time to train, right? I don't want a fight to be announced that's happening next month. That, by the way, was a Sugar Ray Robinson trick. Right? Look at the distance between Robinson's first fight against Randy Turpin and Robinson's second fight against Randy Turpin, right? If Tyson Fury is given a chance to train, I would take Tyson Fury over Vladimir Klitschko. I wouldn't hesitate to take Tyson Fury over Deontay Wilder. I'd take Tyson Fury over Kubrat Pulev. I'd take Tyson Fury over Brian Jennings. Who do I consider Tyson Fury to be? I consider Tyson Fury to be the man who could be king. I think in a sea of heavyweights, and certainly Tyson Fury doesn't have the level of accomplishment that Vladimir Klitschko has. Right? Klitschko has a string of title fights against elite competition. But past accomplishment, as they like to tell you in the investment world, is not indicative of future performance. Doesn't guarantee future performance. Right? That's a better way to put it. And I'm just here to tell you that I think Tyson Fury has more talent than the other guys I have just named. Let's talk about why. You know, Tyson Fury, we just saw Terrence Crawford dismantle Yorkie Scamboa. You know, Tyson Fury's ambidextrous. You know, like Crawford, Tyson Fury throws an excellent left jab, and if he needs to, Tyson Fury can throw an excellent right jab. Understand, Tyson Fury is whoever he needs to be in the moment. Compare and contrast him to Vladimir Klitschko. Vladimir Klitschko is a robot by comparison. Right? Klitschko is shooting a jab out of the same stance. He rarely goes to the body. Tyson Fury, by contrast, is more in the moment. He's reading the lay of the land. He's more 
adaptive, reactive. Whatever the lay of the land requires, that's what Tyson Fury tries to give. So Tyson Fury takes out Derek Chisora's body in the first fight. Understand Tyson Fury isn't trying to run away from Derek Chisora like Malik Scott is. Nor is he heavily relying on a jab like Kevin Johnson is trying to do against Derek Chisora. Now Tyson Fury against a stalker cuts off the distance in the ring. Understand how breathtaking it is. Tyson Fury is much taller than Derek Chisora. Tyson Fury is one of the tallest boxers in the sport. But yet Fury, when needed, can fight small. He can bend over. He can fight like Julio Cesar Chavez. Right? Tyson Fury, when he needs to be on his back foot, can out back foot you. Wasn't that him? Out jabbing Kevin Johnson. When Tyson Fury is in against a smaller man, Steve Cunningham, Tyson Fury can literally decide that he's just going to lean on him, right? This is a different level of leaning than Vladimir Klitschko's leaning. This is, let's say, Philly schoolyard leaning. Look at that fight against Steve Cunningham. And look at how Tyson Fury, a guy with an excellent back foot game, decides to throw his weight around. He starts smothering Cunningham. He starts leaning on Cunningham. He starts walking down Cunningham in a fight in which he hit the deck. That fight is over by the middle rounds. Right? Cunningham's not caught with fluke punches. Cunningham is walked down. Now let me say this, I understand that there are some storm clouds with Tyson Fury. I myself, when I'm betting on Tyson Fury, always bet less than I would on, let's say, a Floyd Mayweather. Now it's not because I perceive any big talent gap between the two. By the way, in my opinion, and as I've said, I've broken with the crowd. That's the neighborhood in which Tyson Fury belongs. The Floyd Mayweather neighborhood. The top shelf. Right? But I'll concede. With Floyd, I know what I'm getting. Whatever the outside the ring persona, whoever he's hanging with, it could be Justin Bieber, it could be Johnny Manziel. Right, by the way, I'm a Manziel fan, but he's not Cam Newton. We'll talk about that in other videos. Right, whoever Floyd is hanging with, whoever Floyd is feuding with, Right? It could be his own father, which has happened in the past. It could be 50 Cent, as has happened in the past. It could be a girlfriend, as has happened in the past. Whoever Floyd is feuding with, I know that Mayweather is going to show up on fight night physically and mentally prepared for battle. You think about Floyd Mayweather, there's a mental side to his game that cannot be discounted, right? He's never caught up in the moment. You're talking about a guy who always keeps his head. Whatever said in the pre-fight hype, Floyd in the ring looks across the ring and knows exactly what he wants to do with Canelo 
Marcus Maidana, guys with punches, etc. Now Tyson Fury isn't there yet. I believe the talent's there. But mentally, Tyson Fury gets caught up in the moment. Right? So, how Tyson Fury's hands are as close to his waist as they are when he gets dropped by Steve Cunningham remains a mystery to me. There are Tyson Fury fights where Tyson Fury is talking so much to his opponent, you wonder if Tyson Fury realizes that he's in a boxing match and not having a private conversation. Right? Tyson Fury is a showman. Now, I believe showmanship should be a part of everyone's game. Boxing, after all, is the entertainment business. But sometimes Tyson Fury's showmanship is dangerous. In other words, he's not doing bolo punches and keeping himself protected out of a boxing stance. Tyson Fury will literally stop boxing altogether, stand there, and pretend to be brushing his opponent off his shoulder. Now, it's great stuff. I'm a big fan of Tyson Fury's showmanship, but it's dangerous, right? In a competitive sport, if you stop fighting and you start spending time, if your hand is over here brushing off your opponent's ashes, figuratively, why can't an opponent time that tactic? Right? Time a response to it where they hit you over here because, of course, when you're brushing off the ashes, your hand's over here, it's not up here to block an opponent's left hand. Right? So Tyson Fury does some things that are high risk. Also, Tyson Fury himself in interviews has talked about his mood swings. They're big. I'm not a medical doctor, but I'm guessing Tyson Fury suffers from mental health challenges, depression. By the way, the incidence of depression is much higher in boxing than it is in society. He's not alone. There are many fighters battling mental health concerns, right? So I'll agree. There are some risks with Tyson Fury, but just understand, talent-wise, it's not close between him and Derek Chisora. Derek Chisora, if he were a baseball pitcher, would be throwing one or two pitches at you, right? Maybe a fastball, maybe a changeup. In fact, I even doubt he has a changeup. By contrast, Tyson Fury is out there throwing different styles at you. He would have at least four pitches. He can loop punches. He can shorten punches. He can outbox you. He can go flat-footed and outslug you. One of the things I like about Fury is that he realizes that in his own family, he has the second best jab, right? Yugi Fury actually is just blessed with one of boxing's best jabs. I actually like the idea of superstar fighters understanding their mortality, right? I even like the idea of superstar fighters having overcome adversity, like Tyson Fury had to when he got dropped by Steve Cunningham. Fury now knows that if he hams it up too much, he can get dropped. Right? So, let me just say, as I see it, if Tyson Fury just gets his head together, and that's asking a lot, if he comes in the ring focused, in my opinion, Tyson Fury is, and let me frame this next, sentence. He is the best heavyweight in boxing. I'll agree certain styles would give him problems, but I privately was expecting him 
to beat David Hay in a head-to-head -head matchup. I'm expecting him to blow out Derek Chisora. Right after that, if I were him, I would wait around for Vladimir Klitschko. If he were to fight Deontay Wilder, I would expect him to block Wilder's long right hand. Then I would expect him to get inside against the unbeaten Wilder and stop him. Right? I think the talent is there. I think Wilder is going to have to, excuse me, I think Fury is going to have to figure out whether he wants to beat Chizura from the inside out or from the outside in. He has the talent to do both. I get the feeling that because he is very tall, because he's full of himself, because he's a guy who comes across as more abrasive than lovable, because, as Wilt Chamberlain once said, nobody roots for Goliath, and Fury almost always is the bigger man, I think the boxing public has under estimated him. So, I'm just going to go wherever the film takes me. And the film on Tyson Fury tells me that he's better than Derek Chisora. Right? Fury's working out the kinks on his left-handed stance. I'm just telling you, a guy with this kind of personality who you're looking at him and you can't quite gauge what he's doing. In other words, you see him and you say, oh, this is a guy who likes to work behind a jab. Then suddenly you see the first Derek Chisora fight. Or you see the Steve Cunningham fight. And then you start to realize, wow, this guy can actually get on his front foot and smother an opponent. He can lean on an opponent he can take away an opponent's body while trading on the inside with him. Right? Then you see him in other fights. And you notice he's doing subtle things. He's staggering punches. He's changing tempo. That's when you realize you're dealing with a poker player. Understand in poker culture, a guy will sit at the table looking like he's you know, been drinking for the last six hours. He'll look like he didn't sleep last night. He'll be wearing leopard skin and crazy outfits. Then the guy will proceed to count cards and take you out. I believe that's who Tyson Fury is. I think the boxing world needs to take notice of this guy starting right here. Let me point out too. I know that I always say, gee, I think this guy would do well against Vladimir Klitschko. I think Vladimir Klitschko would have a problem with that guy, right? I know people feel that I undervalue people like Vladimir Klitschko and Manny Pacquiao, right? My point is simply style-wise, there's certain parts of Klitschko's game that leave him vulnerable, right? Klitschko doesn't go to the body as well as Tyson Fury does. Right? Understand the way Klitschko was able to talk Alexander Povetkin's head under his shoulder every time Povetkin came in was really an indictment on, first of all, Povetkin being that predictable, having his head in such a way repeatedly that Vladimir Klitschko was able to bend him over and tuck him under his arm. But understand, there's also a height dynamic there that wouldn't exist against the Tyson Fury. How would Vladimir Klitschko tie up Tyson Fury? Let me point out too, Tyson Fury fights on the inside. Would Tyson Fury even let him? Right? I like Tyson Fury over Derek Chisora. I think this is an A-level fighter against an overachieving 
Energizer Bunny, crowd favorite, crowd pleasing fighter with a low ceiling. Right? I think Tyson Fury, if he plays his cards right, and he does need to fight more often. Let's be blunt here. Right? The way he's doing his career right now isn't the best. He's a young man in his 20s who isn't taking the sport as seriously as an older lion would. Right? But if Tyson Fury gets in the ring more, all I'm saying is that the talent is there to do great things. I like Tyson Fury, and I hope you keep an eye on him. Right? Don't be surprised if this fight ends more emphatically than David Hayes' KO of Derek Chisora. I'm expecting Tyson Fury to win big. I would hedge the play if the odds allow with Derek Chisora by KO. One thing I do think I know is that Chisora is not going to outbox Tyson Fury. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.